The era of the judges was a turbulent time in Israel's history, marked by repeated cycles of sin and redemption. During this period, a severe famine struck the land, forcing many families to make difficult decisions for survival. Among them was the family of Elimelech, his wife Naomi, and their two sons, Milan and Kilian. They were from Bethlehem in Judah, but due to the famine, they decided to sojourn in the country of Moab. Elimelech's decision to move was not without risk. Moab was a foreign land with different customs and gods, but the famine left them with little choice. They packed their belongings and embarked on a journey to Moab, hoping to find sustenance and a better life. In Moab, tragedy struck. Elimelech passed away, leaving Naomi a widow in a foreign land. Her sons, Milan and Kilian, took Moabite women as their wives. Milan married Ruth, and Kilian married Orpah. For about ten years, they lived in Moab. But then both Milan and Kilian also died, leaving Naomi without her husband and sons. Only her two daughters-in-law remained. Naomi's grief was profound. She felt the weight of her losses deeply. With no male relative to protect and provide, Naomi decided to return to her homeland, having heard that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them. Naomi prepared to leave Moab with her daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah, on the road back to Judah, Naomi urged them to return to their own mother's homes. She blessed them, wishing that the Lord would show kindness to them as they had shown to her and to their deceased husbands. Naomi kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud, expressing their reluctance to leave her. Orpah eventually agreed to return to her people and her gods, but Ruth clung to Naomi. Naomi tried to persuade Ruth to follow Orpah, but Ruth replied with a deep declaration of loyalty, Do not urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. Naomi realized Ruth's determination and ceased her attempts to dissuade her. Together they journeyed back to Bethlehem. Their arrival caused quite a stir in the town, and the women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Naomi, feeling the bitterness of her losses, responded, Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. As the barley harvest was beginning, Naomi and Ruth settled in Bethlehem. Ruth took the initiative to provide for them asking Naomi for permission to go to the fields and pick up leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes she found favor. Naomi agreed, and Ruth went out and began to glean in the fields. Ruth found herself working in a field belonging to Boaz, a relative of Naomi's late husband Elimelech. Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you, they responded. The Lord bless you. Boaz noticed Ruth and inquired about her. The overseer of the harvesters explained that she was the Moabite who had come back with Naomi. He told Boaz about her hard work and how she had been gathering since this morning. Boaz approached Ruth and spoke kindly to her, encouraging her to stay in his field and promising her protection. 
He also invited her to drink from the water jars whenever she was thirsty. Ruth was overwhelmed by his kindness and asked why she had found such favor in his eyes, as she was a foreigner. Boaz replied that he had heard about everything she had done for her mother-in-law since the death of her husband, and how she had left her father and mother and homeland to come to a people she did not know. He blessed her, saying, May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. At mealtime, Boaz invited Ruth to eat with the harvesters. He offered her some roasted grain, and she ate all she wanted and had some left over. After Ruth got up to glean, Boaz instructed his men to let her gather among the sheaves and not to reprimand her. He even told them to pull out some stalks from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up. Ruth gleaned in the field until evening, and when she threshed the barley she had gathered, she carried it back to town, where her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave Naomi what she had left over from her meal. Naomi asked her where she had worked and blessed the man who took notice of her. Ruth told her about Boaz, and Naomi praised the Lord, noting that Boaz was a close relative and one of their guardian redeemers. Naomi advised Ruth to stay close to Boaz's workers so she would be safe. Ruth followed her mother-in-law's advice and stayed close to the women of Boaz to glean until the barley and wheat harvests were finished. Naomi, wanting to seek a secure future for Ruth, came up with a plan. She instructed Ruth to wash, put on perfume, and get dressed in her best clothes. Then she was to go down to the threshing floor, but not let Boaz know she was there until he had finished eating and drinking. Naomi told her to note the place where he lay down, then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He would tell her what to do. Ruth did as Naomi instructed. After Boaz had finished eating and drinking, he was in good spirits. He went to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled Boaz, and he turned. There was a woman lying at his feet. He asked, Who are you? I am your servant Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. Boaz praised Ruth for her kindness, noting that she had not gone after the younger men, whether rich or poor, He assured her that he would do what she asked, as all the people of the town knew she was a woman of noble character. However, there was a guardian redeemer closer in line than Boaz. He promised to settle the matter in the morning. Boaz told Ruth to stay until morning, so she lay at his feet until then, but got up before anyone could be recognized. Boaz gave her six measures of barley, saying, Do not go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. When Ruth returned to Naomi and told her everything Boaz had done, Naomi advised her to wait and see what would happen, as Boaz would not rest until the matter was settled. Boaz went to the town gate and sat down, when the closer guardian redeemer came by. Boaz invited him to sit. Boaz gathered ten of the town's elders as witnesses and explained the situation. Naomi was selling the land that belonged to Elimelech, and it was the guardian redeemer's duty to buy it back to keep it in the family. The man agreed, but balked when Boaz mentioned that buying the land also meant marrying Ruth to maintain the deceased's name with his property. The guardian redeemer declined, fearing it would endanger his own estate, and allowed Boaz to redeem it himself. 
in the presence of the elders and witnesses, Boaz declared he had bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilian, and Milan, and that he had acquired Ruth as his wife to maintain the name of the dead with his property. The elders and all the people at the gate blessed Boaz, expressing their hope that Ruth would be like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the family of Israel, and that Boaz's house would be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. Boaz married Ruth, and the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. The women of the town said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you, and who is better to you than seven sons, has given him birth. Naomi took the child in her arms and cared for him. The women living there said, Naomi has a son, and they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. The story of Ruth and Boaz is a tale of loyalty, kindness, and divine providence. It reminds us that God's plan often unfolds in unexpected ways, turning mourning into joy and providing redemption through acts of love and faithfulness. As we reflect on Ruth's journey, we are reminded of the power of steadfast love and faith in God's provision. Ruth's loyalty to Naomi, Boaz's kindness and integrity, and God's guiding hand all weave together to create a beautiful tapestry of redemption and hope. Ruth's story encourages us to trust in God's timing and provision, even when we cannot see the way forward. It calls us to be faithful in our relationships, to act with kindness and integrity, and to believe in the transformative power of God's love. As we drift into sleep, let us meditate on the lessons of Ruth's story. Let us remember that God is always at work in our lives, often in ways we do not understand, bringing about His perfect plan. May we rest in the assurance of His love and care, knowing that He will provide for us and guide us through every season of life. In the quiet of the night, Let us find peace in the knowledge that God is our guardian redeemer, always ready to rescue and restore us. Now let's begin by taking a few deep breaths, inhaling slowly through your nose and exhaling gently through your mouth. With each breath, feel your body relaxing releasing the tension of the day. Let your mind settle and allow the soothing narrative of Ruth's story to wash over you. As we enter the scene, imagine the ancient lands of Moab and Bethlehem. Visualize the rugged terrain, the gentle rolling hills, and the fields ripe with grain. Picture the family struggling through the challenges of famine, making difficult choices to survive. See Naomi, a woman of faith, yet burdened with grief, leaving her homeland with her family to find sustenance in a foreign land. Wherever you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God my God. Breathe deeply and let the residents of Ruth's commitment fill your heart. Reflect on the strength and loyalty she showed, choosing to leave behind all that was familiar to her to stay with her mother-in-law, Naomi, and to embrace a new faith and a new life. Imagine Ruth and Naomi on their journey back to Bethlehem. Feel the weight of their sorrow but also the flicker of hope as they return to Naomi's homeland. 
see the dusty roads, the long days of travel, and the quiet nights under the stars. Picture Ruth's determination and Naomi's resilience as they walk side by side, each step a testament to their bond. As you continue to breathe deeply, imagine yourself walking alongside them. Feel the ground beneath your feet, the warm breeze on your face, and the presence of God guiding you. Let the rhythm of your breath sink with the pace of their journey, steady and purposeful. Now, visualize Ruth gleaning in the fields of Boaz. Picture the golden stalks of barley, the sun shining brightly overhead, and the sense of peace that comes from honest work. See Ruth, her hands busy, her heart full of quiet hope. She is diligent, gathering the grain that will sustain her and Naomi. Reflect on the kindness of Boaz, who noticed Ruth's effort and extended his protection and provision. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Breathe in the warmth of Boaz's blessing. Feel the assurance of God's provision knowing that you, too, are under his wings, safe and cared for. Allow this feeling of security to deepen your relaxation, releasing any remaining tension in your body. As you continue to relax, think about the moments in your life when you have felt lost or uncertain, and how God's presence has guided you through Reflect on the people who have shown you kindness and the ways in which you have been able to extend kindness to others. Now visualize the threshing floor, a place of transformation and new beginnings. See Ruth, courageous and humble, approaching Boaz in the quiet of the night. Feel the tension and the anticipation, the trust and the hope. Picture Boaz waking to find Ruth at his feet and responding with grace and honor. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. Breathe deeply, feeling the sacredness of this moment. Reflect on the concept of the guardian redeemer and how God's love and redemption are woven into our lives. Let this sense of divine protection and care wrap around you like a warm blanket, comforting and securing you as you prepare for sleep. Imagine the resolution of Ruth's story, the redemption and transformation that come through Boaz's actions. See their wedding, the joy in the community, and the birth of their son Obed who will carry forward the legacy of faith and loyalty. Picture Naomi holding her grandson, her heart full, her life renewed. As you lie here, ready to drift into sleep, consider the ways in which Ruth's story speaks to your own life. Think about the themes of loyalty, faith, and divine provision. Reflect on how God has been present in your own journey, guiding you, providing for you, and redeeming your circumstances. Allow these thoughts to settle in your mind, creating a sense of peace and assurance. Continue to breathe deeply, feeling the presence of God surrounding you, comforting you, and preparing you for a restful night's sleep. Let the story of Ruth be a gentle lullaby, reminding you of God's faith and love. As you drift off, imagine yourself under the same starlit sky that Ruth and Naomi once gazed upon. Feel the cool night air, the stillness, 
and the sense of being part of a larger story, God's story, that spans generations and reaches into eternity. Now let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we draw near to the close of this day, we come before you with hearts filled with gratitude and reverence. We thank you for the gift of rest and the promise of new beginnings with each dawn. Tonight, we are reminded of the profound and timeless story of Ruth, a story of loyalty, love, and divine provision. Lord, we reflect on Ruth's unwavering commitment to Naomi. Despite the uncertainties and hardships, she chose a path of faithfulness and love. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Ruth's words echo in our hearts, reminding us of the power of loyalty and the beauty of sacrificial love. Help us, Father, to emulate Ruth's devotion in our relationships, standing by those we love through thick and thin. We think of Naomi, who, despite her deep sorrow and loss, found hope and renewal through Ruth's steadfast support. Lord, help us to find comfort and strength in our own times of despair, trusting that you are always working behind the scenes, bringing restoration and new life. Father, we are also reminded of Boaz, a man of integrity and kindness. Through his actions, we see your hand of provision and care. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. We pray for hearts like Boaz, willing to show compassion and generosity to those in need. May we be the instruments of your love, offering refuge and support to others. As we lay down to rest tonight, we ask for your peace to envelop us. Let us feel your presence as a comforting blanket, soothing our worries and calming our minds. We surrender all our anxieties and burdens to you, trusting in your unfailing love and provision. Lord, we also pray for those who may feel alone or abandoned tonight. May they find solace in your embrace and hope in the story of Ruth and Naomi. Remind them that you are a God of new beginnings, always ready to turn our mourning into joy and our emptiness into abundance. As we drift into sleep, let our dreams be filled with your light and our hearts be attuned to your will. May we wake refreshed and renewed, ready to walk in faith and love, just as Ruth did. Guide us, Lord, in our daily lives, helping us to make choices that honor you and reflect your grace. Thank you, Father, for the lessons of loyalty, faith, and divine provision that Ruth's story teaches us. Thank you for your constant presence and care, for the ways you provide for us and guide us. We rest in your love tonight, knowing that you are always with us, watching over us, and working all things for our good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.